Hello gardeners, Lindsay here with the Mindful Living Movement. And if we haven't met before, I am an urban organic gardener sharing all my little tips and tricks to help you grow your bountiful and abundant garden. So today we're gonna talk about something that is very important and that is feeding your plants. Now different times throughout the season, you're going to want to add more fertilizer to the garden. And the easiest way that you can possibly do that and my favorite is always compost and vermicompost. The reason that I absolutely love those two is because you cannot go wrong, you cannot use too much, and there's a lot of other little side benefits that go with it. So beside me here, I've got a bucket of worm castings and I've got some compost, just regular compost. Now, the difference between these two is that worm castings are considerably more dense in their nutrients. So a little bit of worm castings goes a lot further than a regular compost will. However, both are fabulous. So I'm gonna take you around the garden and show you sort of how I'm gonna apply both of these here um, in the early part of July. And typically speaking, most of your garden, you're gonna to want to add some sort of extra nutrients roughly every month. However, the heavy feeders, as we'll call them, things like tomatoes and squash and corn, sunflowers, um, any of the larger plants, the plants that have a lot of fruits and things coming off of them, they do tend to need a little bit more. So every couple of weeks could be something that you could also do. I do um, add in a lot of compost early in the year before I actually plant anything. So this is gonna be my second round. And what I'm going to do, because most of my garden is run on a drip irrigation system, is, and I only have, this is all I have here for worm castings, is this bucket, which is a pretty, pretty good amount. However, I have a lot of area to cover. So because this is much more nutrient dense, I'm not going to just kind of broadcast it all over my garden. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to strategically place little spoonfuls of this kind of next to my plant, sort of near the root base, right underneath where the drip emitter is coming out, because that's gonna be the quickest shot of sort of nutrient influx into the plants. And then the rest of my compost here, I'm gonna start with the areas around the heavy feeder plants. I'm hoping, I don't think I'm gonna have enough, but what I'm gonna do with the rest of this is I'm going to top dress the whole garden if I can, if not, it's just gonna be my heavy feeder plants. But when I say top dressing, it, what it means is I'm going to place a good solid thick layer on top of my soil that's already there. And this serves as a couple of things. Um, when the rain and water and stuff like that is gonna to help to disperse nutrients into the soil. But also when you do a top dressing and you sort of essentially create a, a mulch layer on the top of your soil, you're suppressing weeds, which is fabulous because less weeds is always better for us gardeners. And the other really cool thing is, is that compost, vermicompost, regular compost holds moisture fabulously. So if you have a kind of a poorer soil, by essentially mulching the top of your soil with your compost, you're going to help to keep moisture in, which is really, really key, right? Especially with all these crazy heat that we're getting this year. So I'm going to kind of show you just kind of how I apply both of these things. And I don't think I'm going to have enough for my whole entire garden, which means that I'm going to have to um, venture into different sort of um, like manufactured organic fertilizers, which there are so many great ones out there now. If you, if you don't have worm castings and you don't have compost, you can definitely use those as well. I will link in my blog as well. I've got a very comprehensive list of fabulous um, other options for fertilizers to use. But the reason that this is my first choice is because one, I created it myself. So this is all my food scraps, yard waste, paper, like you name it, everything here. So one, it's a very sustainable thing to do. Two, there's a ton of fabulous nutrients in it. There's a whole bunch of microbes that I'm gonna be bringing into my soil because the more microbes, the happier your soil is gonna be, the happier plants are going to be. It helps to hold moisture into your soil. It helps to suppress weeds if we use it as a mulch on top of the surface. Um, what else? The nature of it is, a, is a, what they would call like a hummus type material. So it's fluffy and it's light, which means that oxygen can penetrate down deep into your soil, which is really important because if you don't have good sort of oxygen penetration down into your soil and you end up with a whole bunch of moisture settling in there, you can actually waterlog your roots, i.e. give your plants root rot, 
Whereas if you have a fluffy, aerated, moisture retentive soil, you're not going to waterlog your plants. It'll hold moisture for you, but your plants can still breathe. So there's so many benefits. The other thing I really love is that it's, it's a slow release. The plants are going to take nutrients out of this as they need it. It's not just like this quick blast at the plants where you need to be careful with your using manufactured fertilizers because it is instant. The plants are going to almost uptake all of it as soon as you have one good watering. And if you're not careful or you accidentally put too much in one spot or you get a little heavy handed with your mixing of it, you can kill your plants. You can fertilizer burn them. Um, at the very least, you might just stress them out. So this is sort of like the idiot proof way to fertilize. And as I listed off all amazing benefits. So if you don't have um, either compost or vermicompost accessible to you, you don't have your own system going or you kind of want to add more. I do have a course, uh, which I will also link in the, the comments, which is all about vermicomposting and composting. It is everything you need to know to set up your system, troubleshoot it. Um, I even offer up ways that are a little bit more non-traditional. You don't actually have to have compost bins if you want to, so that you can get a lot of this on standby for your garden and just constantly keep adding it in as much as you can. I am hoping that I will end up with um, one more haul of compost yet at the end of the year. So that's gonna be three times I've added compost to my garden this year. One, I did a big top dress before I even planted. Two is going to be this one. And probably in another month, I'm going to do another one yet. So maybe with a combination or maybe with just with regular compost, depending on what I have available. Now it's pretty easy. You really can't go wrong with how you apply these to your garden. As I mentioned, it's pretty idiot proof, um, but I am going to sort of put this stuff in a little bit closer proximity to the plants and to the drip emitters. Also, I'm going to show you how I apply this to the areas of my garden that are just sort of regular raised beds where they're just dirt. And then also I do have vegetables planted in mulched areas, like straight up tree mulch that I've sort of dug a little hole, added some dirt, planted them into. Those ones, they don't have a lot of soil. They're just a lot of tree mulch. So those ones, I'm really gonna try and keep everything um, compacted near the plant because obviously if I was broadcasting this over top of my tree mulch, that would be a little bit weird, but I want to make sure those plants are getting the access to all the nutrients and moisture retention and microbes and all that stuff. So let's get started. So here are my butternut squash and they are, as you can see, they're growing completely in tree mulch. Um, underneath here is a little bit of soil, topsoil, um, in the sense that I've used this mulch to basically kill the grass and it's been slowly decomposing for three years or so. So there's some some soil underneath there, but really not a lot. And for that reason, this tends to not be maybe like the most productive vegetable patch. However, I do still get harvest out of it. And so what I do with these ones here is rather than spreading my compost all over the place, which would be kind of pointless, is I basically just right where the root ball and everything is, I'm gonna kind of dig away the mulch just a little bit. And then I'm going to add a pretty good helping of compost and also worm compost in here and then cover it back up and I'm sort of wherever like my little drip emitters are sitting that's kind of where I put the concentration of it so that it can kind of wash all of that into the soil so that's kind of what I do when I'm in sort of these tree mulch type areas is I keep it a little bit more concentrated also I mean the tree mulch is really good for moisture retention um, but sometimes if my hoses move or something like that, the, the water ends up maybe not watering it as good as it probably could. So it can help out a lot with that. Like this is pretty dry here right now and it hasn't actually watered yet today, but it's a little drier than I would like it. So that'll definitely help it out.
The raised garden bed areas in my garden, I'm going to put a scoop of vermicompost worm poop underneath each of sort of the main heavy feeder plants. I've got some eggplant, I've got onions, I've got um, some tomatoes, some peppers all kind of scattered throughout this bed. They all fall under that window of being heavy feeders. So what I'm gonna do is the vermicompost is gonna get a scoop underneath each plant. And then the rest of the bed, I'm basically going to just take my regular compost and I'm going to add a solid layer right across the surface of the whole entire bed. And as I mentioned in the first video, so it's going to basically serve to give easy nutrients for the plants when they need them. The worm compost I'm putting right at the base of the plant because for the most part I do have drip emitters sitting right at the base of all the plants, so it'll just give them that little bit extra. And really, the reason that I'm covering the whole top of the surface is largely due to moisture retention and weed suppression. I have found that it has helped immensely. You do not need to mix it in. Um, it's a little bit of, I don't know, like an old wives tale that you actually need to mix the compost into the soil for it to be beneficial, you do not. The microbes are going to still disperse, the worms are gonna find it, and in the end, you're gonna save yourself a little bit of work, plus you're having that nice sort of mulching effect on top of the soil as well. So I'll give you a peek at what that looks like. Okay gardeners, that is everything you need to know for applying your compost and vermicompost to your garden. As you saw, it's super easy. You can't go wrong. You can use as much as you want. As long as it's well broken down, you can spread that stuff everywhere and you don't have to worry about possibly shocking your plants or anything of that nature. However, sometimes we don't have enough or maybe we don't have access to it at all, you know, and that's totally fine. I definitely maybe a little bit later in the season if I don't have enough I'm going to be adding in some more supplemental fertilizer some of the organic ones that I mentioned that I have you know a whole list of um, you can grab that in the comments there's so many great ones out there my only word of caution with that is less is definitely more I have seen even when I followed exactly sort of the the ratios that you know whatever the brand is you're using if it says like this many scoops per how many liters or whatever it is I have followed it very carefully and I've even still seen a little bit of stress in my plants on the odd occasions so my rule of thumb is just dial it back by about 30 percent so that less is definitely more and when I've sort of applied that rule across the board I've had awesome success with those so don't hesitate to go that route but if you can get going on the worm composting get you know find a local supplier get your own system going get your own regular compost system going if you can or get find you know find a local supplier that you can get a lot of it because it's much more well-rounded you get that moisture retention you get the microbes you can use it for weed suppression you get that nice easy sort of slow drip of nutrients into your plants if you will and I like to call it like the idiot proof way to fertilize your garden just throw a bunch of that in there and call it good it even 
balances the pH to almost perfect pH levels for most vegetables in your garden. So a lot of things happening sort of behind the scenes that you don't actually need to pay attention to. You don't have to get pH things out and test. You don't have to amend. You don't have to worry about possibly overdoing it. So that's always why I use as much of that as I possibly can. But the bigger your garden is, the more you need and so on and so forth. So sometimes we do need to supplement and go with some alternative options. And if you're keen, if you're thinking that, you know what, maybe I do want to get my own worm bin going or my own regular compost, or maybe I just want to figure out how to compost without actually even having any of those things, definitely check out my mini um, composting course. You will learn everything that you need to know as well as get your system up and running in the span of probably like three days if you're really keen. The videos are very concise, all the information that you need to know you can refer back to at a later time if you need to troubleshoot some things, but it's more than just kind of throwing all your food scraps into a bin and then voila, it's gonna turn into compost for you. There's a little bit of nuances to it, a little bit of things that can help really speed up that process and kind of get you going and get as much food into your garden as you possibly can. So have a beautiful rest of your day. I hope that you guys are staying cool. It is going to be a really big scorcher day today. So have an amazing day and we'll see you guys. Thank you.